In this video, I want to talk about delta H and how it pertains to phase changes. So there's lots of questions that you might see on the AP exam in which they have a phase change happening and they're trying to get you to predict a sign of whether or not it's endo or exothermic. Is it a negative delta H or a positive delta H? So if we look over here, let's just refresh. If we have an exothermic reaction, that means it's releasing energy. That gives us a negative delta H value. If we have an endothermic reaction, then that means that it is a positive delta H value. It is actually absorbing energy. So releasing and absorbing energy pertains to things that are happening in a phase change. Before we get into just jumping in and, and figuring out the signs of each, let's talk about each of these states of matter individually, starting with liquids. Liquids we know that they're pretty fairly spaced out, right? So we have these molecules that are pretty spaced out, like so, okay? Now let's compare that to a solid. Now solids are gonna be fairly compact, right? So fairly compact, you might have a substance like so. And gases, we know that are pretty spread out, they're pretty dispersed, pretty sporadic there. Now, let's talk about these states of matter as far as energy. If we were to look at a little simulation with a solid, what we would see is just these little solids just vibrating back and forth. They do not have a lot of energy. If we were to see a simulation with the liquids, then we might see some vibrating back and forth, but also having translational motion. So they're kind of moving back and forth because they have a little bit of space there. If we look at gases, on the other hand, those have vibrational motion, translational motion, and even rotational motion. So these guys would be moving quite sporadically around in the container. So due to that, we can relate that to energy. So these solids wouldn't have very much energy. So we would say that this would be at the lowest energy state. Lowest energy. Liquids will be kind of the middle of the road, and gases will have the highest energy of all of the states of matter. Now, if we know what direction we're heading into, does it make sense that solid going to liquids is going to a higher energy state? A liquid going to a gas is going to a higher energy state and a solid going to a gas is going to a higher energy state as well. Now, if I'm starting out at a low energy state and I'm trying to get into a higher energy state, what's gonna have to happen? Well, I'm gonna have to put energy in in order to get there, right? So if I have to put energy in, what that is telling me is that I will have to have an endothermic process so a solid going to a liquid is an endothermic, a positive delta H process. The reason why is because I'm going to a higher energy state. Now, what is it called whenever I have a solid going to a liquid? That is just melting. Now let's look at a liquid going to a gas. Now liquids have mediocre energy, gases have higher energy. So if I'm going to a higher energy state, I'm going to have to put energy in. And since I have to put energy in, I'm going to have a positive delta H value. Now, what is it called when you have a liquid going to a gas? That is known as evaporation. Now let's look at the other side here. A solid going to a gas is going to a higher energy state, right? So in order to go to a higher energy state, I have to put energy in, and I will do that by an endothermic process, putting energy into the system. Now, what is it called when a solid goes to a gas? That is known as sublimation, sublimation, S-U-B-L-I-M, a-T-I-O-N. That is known as sublimation. So now we know what's happening if we're going to a higher energy state of matter. Now let's talk about if we're going to a lower energy state of matter. 
If I'm going from a gas to a liquid, I have ener high energy going to a lower energy state. If I'm going from higher to lower, in order to get to that lower energy state, I have to do something with that energy that I have before, right? I have to release some of that energy. And because I'm releasing some of that energy, that's a negative delta H exothermic process. Now, if I'm releasing energy and I'm going from a gas to a liquid, what is that called? It's known as condensation. If I'm going from a liquid to a solid, what I'm doing is I'm going to a lower state of energy. And anytime I'm going to a lower state of energy, I have to release energy to get there. So that's a negative delta H process, exothermic process. When I have a liquid going to a solid, that is known as freezing. Now let's look at gases going to solids. Gas is a higher energy state than a solid. So what I'm doing is I'm moving to a lower energy state. If I'm going to a lower energy state, I have to release energy to get there. So that again is a negative delta H an exothermic process. Now some people forget this one. When I go from a gas to a solid, what that phase change is called there is deposition. D E P O S I T I O N deposition. So you might have some questions that have a phase change. Let's say we have X going from the solid to X going to the liquid state. And it might have you predict the sign of delta H. Well, if you understand this conceptually, you'll easily be able to predict the sign. So if I'm going from a solid to a liquid, am I going to a higher energy state or am I going to a lower energy state? Well, if I look here on my chart, I'm going to a higher energy state. And if I'm going to a higher energy state, then that means I have to put energy into the system. So my delta H value would be positive. And that's how you're going to approach these type of questions.